After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014, and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is Maxing a Main. What's up guys, welcome back to episode 6 of Maxing a Main. We ended last video getting 60 agility and getting a full graceful set. In this video, I want to get to level 70 agility because that is the last thing that we unlock in the areas section of the agility guide, which allows us to enter the Ceridoman area of the God Wars dungeon. I've never done God Wars before, but I figured if there is an unlock here, I might as well get that one done instead of staying at level 60 and then getting level 70 another time in the future. We also don't really have a bank right now because I'm pretty sure the only cash we have left is about 3,000 GP. So it's a good thing that we're sticking here at the Canifis course until we get to level 70 agility because this course gives the most marks of grace per hour. All of the other rooftop agility courses give you 80% less marks of grace per hour once you are 20 levels higher than the minimum requirement to do the course. So for example, if I was doing the Varrock rooftop course at level 30 agility, once I'm 20 levels above that, so at level 50 agility, I will then only get 20% of my regular rate of marks of grace, which would make sticking at that course not worth it. However, for some reason, Canifis is the only rooftop course that that's not affected by, which is very nice because it's also the course that gives the most marks of grace per hour. Hour, so we're able to stay here technically until level 99 if we wanted to and we will be getting the best marks of grace possible so even though i'm getting a lot less xp an hour here as opposed to doing the falador course or the seer's village course we're going to be getting a lot more marks of grace which we are going to be able to trade in for amelie's packs and be able to make some extra money which we desperately need right now did they change these options on the frog random event this is super weird why don't you uh, make yourself at home here have a seat What's going on? Not much, how are you? Yeah, good, how are you? Good. Starting out the video strong with a feather donation from level 3 Xenon. Donating 10 million feathers. That's insane. Oh, wait, wait. Here comes another 1 million. 11 million total feather donation from level 3 Xenon. Securing his place in the number one spot at the end of the video on the feather donation high scores. And that 11 million feather donation brought us up to a 24 million feather stack. Oh, and also, as you guys can see, we're up to 220 marks of grace, and we are 30,000 XP away from level 65 agility. I've been saving up the random event stuff for just a clip real quick instead of just recording 800 times. But first things first, we got our XP lamp from Count Check. We're going to put that on Slayer. Every time I get a Quizmaster random event, I always choose the mystery box because there is a chance of it containing a stale baguette, which is really cool. I've never had it on any of my other accounts. The chance is not very high whatsoever, but we have two here in the inventory, and let's see what we get. First one, we got 42 rune arrows. I think that's a pretty rare drop. And then we got a diamond, which I also think is a rare drop. So all together with these two boxes here, we made 4.5k. I thought that those rune arrows were going to be worth more, to be honest. But regardless, let's throw this stuff in the bank and let's get back to training more agility. Oh, and by the way, guys, real quick, I just wanted to show you something that's really, really important. If you look at this graph right here, it literally does not show that any of you guys are subscribed right now. If you could please hit that subscribe button, that would be amazing. We're going for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. What will you have after 500 years? Level 70 agility. I have been here for 500 years. Way longer than I was expecting. It's been so long. We could finally do all of this stuff here. We got our very first level 70 stat on the account. Thank God it's agility. We're not going to have to come back and train more agility in a very, very long time. I'm about due for one more mark of grace right now. So I'm going to do one more lap. And there it is over there. So once we get done with this lap here, we are going to have 617 marks of grace. So we should have a really, really nice amount of money right here from getting level 70 agility. We also have another book of knowledge and another genie lamp. I got the lamp from doing the drill sergeant event, which also ended up unlocking all four emotes. I thought you unlocked them one at a time, but I guess you unlock them all at once. But anyway, let's throw this lamp on Slayer, bringing us up to level 12 Slayer. And then we'll throw the book of knowledge on Slayer as well. 
which got us really, really close, only 8 XP away from level 13 Slayer. Now that we're finally done with agility, let's grab a games necklace and we'll head back over to Grace. Let's trade these in for some Amelie's packs. Okay, so each Amelie's pack is 10 marks of Grace, so we should be able to buy 61 packs. Oh, I just assumed they would stack. Guess not. And here we are with a total of 6.1 thousand Amelie's crystals. Let's head on over to the Grand Exchange and get these things sold. I am really glad that we ended up sticking with the Cannabis Rooftop Agility course instead of the Sears Village course. Even though I was only getting 17,000 XP an hour on the Cannabis course, and the Sears Village course would have been about 40,000 XP an hour, we got so many marks of grace, and getting 6.1 thousand Amelie's crystals is really helping our cash stack, because in case you guys forgot, we only have a 7,000 GP cash stack at the moment. And if I could get all of these to sell for 1190 each, we should be getting a 7.2 mil cash stack from these Amelie's crystals. And shockingly, everything sold pretty quick for 1,190 each, which means that we now have a 7.2 mil cash stack in the bank. I seriously cannot believe we just made over 7 mil from getting level 70 agility. That is some crazy good starter cash. One of the things that I want to do before we go and do some more quests, just so that it's out of the way and that we don't have to go back to it, is level 43 prayer because at level 43 prayer it is the last protection prayer that we will unlock and when i'm doing things like quests or going through dangerous areas having protection prayers is extremely extremely beneficial and now that we remember we can use the chaos altar all the way in the deep wilderness i'm not sure how many dragon bones we're going to need to buy in order to get to level 43 prayer so i'm just going to buy 100 for now and we will see how far that gets us hopefully we don't die and lose these that would suck but I guess only time will tell. I'm also going to purchase... What teleport did I see up here? Yeah, a burning amulet to get us up there. Top to another world that's not as busy as this one. And I guess here we go. Hopefully we don't die. There is a broken multi-cannon here, which means that someone was probably attacked already. That's not really the best sign, to be honest. Let's switch these from fairy to use so we can actually click through really quickly. And there is some guy here who could definitely attack me right now. Let's hope that he doesn't, though. Might as well grab his bones as well and use them on the altar. So that one inventory brought us all the way up to level 36 prayer. Not too bad. I'm going to do exactly what this guy did by taking the wine of Zamrock until we are dead. There's 40 prayer right there. And, of course, we're getting attacked by this random guy to lose absolutely nothing. It's going to be risky going back there, so I'm actually going to switch worlds real quick. We'll just go to a random other world. And hopefully we're able to use these before he hops over and finds us, if he even does. All right, it seems like nobody's here. Let's go in here and we'll close the doors. And this should hopefully be the last inventory. Someone just rolled up. I see the white dot. Should I hop? I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to hop, I'm going to hop, I'm going to hop. And it seems like we're good. Someone just died here. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll see. And here we are with level 43 prayer. I could stop right now, but I'm not going to because then I won't be able to kill myself without losing all of these bones. So we're going to use up the rest of this inventory and then we'll sell the other bones back. Hey, we managed to get level 44 prayer. Very nice. Take this guy's bones, and I'll even use these on the altar as well. All right. Not a bad trip whatsoever. Just realized it also brought us up to a combat level of 46 and a half. And selling the remainder of our bones got us back a nice 67k. Another feather donation, this time from FAQs, with a hefty 5 million feather donation. Thanks so much for adding to the collection, bringing the feather stack up to 29 million feathers. After this video, I'm going to be putting all of the feather donations as screenshots at the end of every single video. That way, they're not taking up too much time during the video and breaking up the flow. So just know that if you want to be in the video with your feather donation, it is now going to be at the end as a screenshot. Now that we're finally done with agility training for a very long time, it's finally time to get back into doing some quests. I want to do as many quests as possible just because they unlock a ton of stuff and the XP whenever we are a lower level like this really helps give us a very early game boost so that we're not wasting time doing tedious, stupid things such as catching shrimp, for example. I said this in the last video, but I honestly forgot until I was editing the video, but we are going to do the Children of the Sun quest. 
I've never done this quest before, and completing it will unlock the ability to go to Varlamore, which is the new continent in the game. Supposedly, we could do it right here in Varrock, and the length is very short, so let's go get it done. Oh, and by the way, the reason that the trees and the lighting and everything looks like this is because in 117, it has the ability to do seasons. So for example, if you go to the 117 plugin and scroll down to environment, you could change your seasonal theme to summer, which is the default one. Then we have autumn, which is the one that's currently running right now, which I really, really like. And then there's also winter. And winter is pretty cool too. It puts snow everywhere. It's like how RuneScape looks during the Christmas events. I have it set to automatic so that it does it automatically. And what it currently is, is apparently autumn. So let me know what you guys think. I really like it. I like the way the leaves change on all of the trees. It looks pretty cool. But if you guys don't like it, I'll turn it off. You know, I'm something of an adventurer myself. Children of the Sun kicks off the Twilight Emissaries quest series. In this quest, you help stop a plot against a group from Varlamore who is visiting Varrock for a treaty signing. Start this quest by talking to Noah or Alina in Varrock Square about the group's arrival. As they meet with the King of Varrock, you spot a suspicious guard leaving Varrock Palace. You then decide to sneakily trail him through the city while hiding to avoid being seen. Fun fact, this is the first quest I've ever done where it was kind of a stealth mission where you had to hide from somebody. Once you've successfully avoided being detected, you then discover that the guard is a part of a bandit group who is planning to attack the visitors from Varlamore. You decide to report it to Sergeant Tobin, who asks you to identify those four bandits posing as guards. Once you've done so and the bandits are caught, you join Prince Itzla for interrogation, where you learn they were hired to kill Servius, token of Ralos, at least I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm not 100% sure. But regardless, Prince Itzla thanks you and invites you to Varlamore to help with the investigation. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this quest. It is just an intro quest, and I wasn't aware that it actually led to more quests that were already in the game. I just assumed that since the continent is new, that they didn't have a whole bunch of stuff after the initial quest, but I guess they do. Oh wow, this really was quick. I did not expect this to be so easy. But here we are, we've completed Children of the Sun, giving us one quest point and access to Varlamore. If I would have known it was actually that short, I would have done it in the last video. But now that that's over, we are going to do another quest. This time it is going to be Daddy's Home. And it's not actually a quest, it's a mini quest. Because doing this quest should get us up to level 8 construction, as well as a free player owned house in Remington. I don't really need the free player owned house, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to be doing everything anyway eventually. So we might as well get the 8 construction levels out of the way all right daddy's home has been started so daddy's home is a mini quest that was released with the mahogany homes update in which a player basically does everything you do in mahogany homes but what you're actually doing is helping marlo's dad renovate a house that was recently squatted in the entire point of this quest is basically to show how Mahogany Homes work. And if you didn't already know, which I don't know how you wouldn't, Mahogany Homes is an alternate way of training construction, where it's basically farming contracts, but for houses. And what you do is get these contracts that have you go town to town and you fix people's houses. And once everything's fixed, you get a reward. It's a lot cheaper than regularly training construction, and the XP is still pretty good per hour. I actually did it on my level 3 skiller for a while so that I could get the skilling outfit for construction. It ended up saving me a decent amount of money, but ultimately I ended up going back down to Oak Dungeon Doors. But yeah, all that we have to do is renovate this house, head on over to the sawmill to turn in these things, and then come back and finish the house up, and then you're basically done. Free level 8 construction. Now that we've built his dad's house for him, we are now level 8 construction, which is very nice. Alright, so a new old school update just happened, and Runelight has not caught up yet. So this is what it would look like if I didn't do any rescaling or anything. This is crazy. Oh my god, it spins so much faster than I'm used to. This is wild. Like, look how small the map is, and I can barely see. This is crazy. I can't believe people play like this at full screen without any resizing options. That's that's nuts to me, honestly. But even though we are not going to be playing until Runelight updates, because this is almost unplayable for me, especially for what we're about to go do, because what we are about to do is get the graceful recolor from the speed running world. I've never in my life logged into an actual old school keep speed running world, but the graceful set looks too good to pass up. Because it's so unique and different, that's the one that I'm going to be going for. And because this is my first ever main account, I want to do some stuff I've never actually done before. Not to mention, we already spent all our marks of grace on Amelie's packs. The only other graceful recolor that I would want would be the black one, but the requirements to get that are so much higher than what we have right now that we wouldn't even be able to get that until way later in this account's progression. 
But because I've never logged in even for one second on the speedrunning worlds before, we are definitely going to be watching a guide on the quickest way to get this graceful recolor. I already got permission to use this clip because he explained it way, way better than I can. And this is also the video I'm going to be watching on how to speedrun. So Lunatar, take it away, man. West speedrunning was added in late 2022, and the game mode takes place on separate worlds and different save profiles. Currently, there are 15 quests to choose from, and completing the platinum time for a quest gives you 320 points. A total of 1800 points are required for the full graceful outfit recolor, so doing 6 of the easiest quests in platinum time will get you the full outfit. So as I said, way better than I could have done. But yeah, that's the guide I'm going to be using. I'm going to link that in the description below. So if you guys want to get this recolor as well, be sure to check out Lunatar's video. Also, I already skimmed through the comment section. There are some comments that give some better methods on completing these quests a little bit faster, a little trick. So be sure to check out the comment section before you go ahead and start the speed run, because that's what I'm about to do. But anyway, let's get into the very first quest that we are going to speed run once Runelight finally updates. Do you have a plan, and can you tell us what it is? I'd run it as good as it can be run. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. Are you serious right now, bro? This is my favorite one so far. Nice job, team. What the fuck is this piece of shit? In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. And okay, we are finally, finally done speedrunning. I enjoyed doing it, but this last quest below Ice Mountain screwed me so many times when I kept burning the bread for some reason. Why they don't give you 99 cooking to do this quest, I don't know. Not to mention that super long cutscene, it really messes up the flow. I really don't like speedrunning this quest. But after getting platinum in every single quest that we have done, we are ending our speedruns with 1,920 speedrun points. So if we log out, switch to a regular world let's talk to eliza and with our 1800 points we are able to buy the tier 3 adventures outfit left us with 120 speedrun points so in the future if we ever wanted to go for the speedy teleport scroll or the giant stopwatch we could always come back we have 120 speedrun points in the bank so before we attach it to our graceful set let's see what this outfit looks like regularly and honestly it's not too bad but that's not why we got it we got it for the graceful recolor so let's do it of course you got to do it one piece at a time and there it is. It looks so much better than the regular adventurer set. Man, I'm glad that we got this. But that is where I'm going to be ending today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like below. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one.